Hello and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm World Leader and I'm thrilled to be hosting this podcast with Bitverse Andy. Bitverse Andy, why don't you say hello? Hey, what's up, world? And hello to our audience. In today's episode of Bit Heroes Radio, just going over the agenda today, we're going to be touching on the latest Bit Heroes news. We will then be going over some in game news, including the upcoming Rumble Invasion which we have a little bit of a leak, so official leak week here on Fit Heroes Radio. Then, of course, we'll get to our Fashion Hero segment and wrap up with some viewer questions. All right, to kick it off with the news, I just wanted to go ahead and shout out Bitverse Andy. He finally got to Tier 16. Honestly, <laughs> it's about time, Andy. We also have a Twitter 50k followers reward that you can claim in the shop for one gold. I believe that one's called Burb. And then we also have a purchasable one for 800 gems, which is called Bird. Nothing really crazy, just cosmetic, but they are pretty cool. Now, to move on with the big part of our episode, let's just go ahead and talk about Rumble Invasion. Now, clearly, it is going to be an invasion, and we do have some juicy leaks here. I'm going to go ahead and let Andy kick it off by starting off with the familiars. All right, so just kicking off with the rare familiars that we see in the leaks here. First off, we're going to go over Garzomon. Looks like he's like a four-armed lizard. Seems like he could dish out some mad damage with those arms. Yeah, he looks pretty buff. I'm honestly thinking he's <laughs> he's uh, going to be pretty awesome to go against. <laughs> I mean, he does have some skinny arms, but we'll take it. <laughs> uh, next up on the rares list, we've got Meridius. Now, Meridius... He's kind of goofy. He's got a little bit of a dad bod, not going to lie, um, <laughs> but respect. <laughs> Looks like he's missing a hand there as well, so perhaps a uh, Captain Hook uh, lore behind that one. Wow, he might be a good part of the team. He could be very handy to bring along. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, next up in the rares, we have Palaga. Now, Palaga... He almost just looks like a big green orc. Um, strong chin line on him. Definitely with that shield. And <laughs> the spear looks like a pencil in his hand. Uh, definitely gives me tank vibes. But what do you think, World? I do think he looks very tanky. Very chiseled jaw indeed. I love the pot <laughs> lid shield. And you weren't kidding when you said it looks like a pencil. Um, very interesting artwork. I really do dig it. And I can't agree anymore. They look very tankish. Yeah, absolutely. And then the fourth and final rare <clears throat> familiar from this bunch, we are looking at Talabardis. Talabardis, uh, I don't know whether he reminds me of, something about those feet reminds me of like elephant hooves, um, but also he looks like an executioner, like with that, I don't, I don't know if you call it a hat, but um, definitely a, a cool looking guy. I'll be honest with you, he reminds me a lot of like Majin Buu, but like not Ooh, at the yeah. same time. He looks kind of goofy, but I like <laughs> him. I don't know what it is. I like him. I like his little weightlifting belt. I like his shoulder pad. I like his elephant toes. He just looks cool. I, I honestly think he looks pretty sick for a rare, but yeah, he's a little on the goofy side if you ask me. Yeah, and by the way, I've noticed on these a few of these familiars that we've been looking at is that there's pieces of pizza um, scattered throughout some of the artwork. So um, I think all of them, except for Pilaga, I've spotted a piece of pizza on. So pretty cool. Um, I'm wondering if Rumble Invasion has something to do with pizza or, or something of the sort. Pizza? Where's the pizza? Where is the pizza? So on, on Garzaman. Okay. On Garzaman, the pizza is on his shirt. Are you sure that's not a Spartan head? You think that's a Spartan head? You think it's a pizza? What what pepperoni <laughs> black? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> it's gotta be a That's Spartan not head. a piece of pizza? No, it, the I'm looking at Meridius' shoulder. Dude, that's so a Spartan head. Oh my gosh. You're lucky ah. it caught that. I could have sworn that was a piece of pizza. Huh. Okay. Well, uh, well art art is in the eye of the beholder, as they say. Um, well, pizza. <laughs> uh, I wish it was pizza. I want some pizza right now. <laughs> um Let's go ahead and go on to the epic familiars. Let's see what they have. Let's see how epic they really are. I'm going to go ahead and start off with Andronkin. Andronkin? Not entirely sure how you say that, but he looks pretty football player-esque for some reason with those shoulder pads and the way he's standing. 
I love his orc hands. He looks so honestly strong. He looks very strong. He looks to be a little I don't know, DPS ish, maybe supporty. I don't really see too much support in him. He looks more offensive than anything. But I really, really dig his whole getup. What do you think? Yeah, he's got big hands. I love that like helmet. Uh, and he, he does give a very big like football player. He's in that stance, you know. I, I like the helmet, how it's like the mouth is is opening up for his face to come through. It's it's pretty uh terrifying. <laughs> he looks pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> We're gonna continue on with Flacket. Very <laughs> very obscure names, but let's check them out real quick. So Flacket honestly <laughs> looks very um very scrawny. It looks like if he tries lifting that axe, his arm's gonna snap. But uh, he has pretty cool armor, and I really like that big um, belt buckle thing he has. I think he looks pretty cool. I like his tail. He seems to be kind of DPS oriented. I would not want him tanking for my team. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's super thin. Uh, again, we have a. I don't know if that's actually a chiseled jawline or an unchiseled jawline. Pretty round. But I will say, in a one v one. Who's got the better detached hand? I gotta say, Flacket is beating Meridius here. So <laughs> oh, I really yeah, love that definitely. axe attachment. That's pretty cool. I think it looks pretty sick. I like him a lot. Flacket's pretty cool. He's cool in my book. Let's see. Who's next? So we have Hi Miko. Hi Miko. I'm gonna say Hi Miko. I don't know. It's two words, but kind of hard to say. Um, they look pretty cool. For an epic, I honestly think they look more like a legendary their artwork is pretty clean i i just love everything they're wearing very like jungle like looks like a baboon and i love that little helmet he has on i like the greens he's holding looks like he's ready to munch on some kale or something <laughs> and if i had to say anything just seeing all the green he just looks kind of like like a healer in a way i think he's going to be a healer that's my prediction i'm not too sure what do you think yeah, so Major Rafiki from the Lion King vibes. <laughs> um, he's really cool. I love the golden helmet, and your idea is holding like that grass or that kale. Um, you know, maybe he eats it, turns out like Popeye, gets super buff. So we'll see. I could definitely see him being a DPS or a support. Now, moving up in the rarity here, up to legendary, we do have two legendary familiars that have been leaked for the Rumble Invasion here. We're going to start off with the first one called Flamboyant. Uh, <laughs> now, Flamboyant is very pink. Flamboyant is a super, I get, I get a lot of vibes like Majin Buu here. You know, he's got those like curved limbs, um, also looks pretty strong. Interesting weapon. I don't know whether to call it like a dual bladed saber or what, but it's pretty cool. So I'm going to have to be completely honest with you. He looks like a giant man baby in a diaper <laughs> with some armor on and goggles. I don't know how I feel about Flamboyant. I would love to put him on my meme team, but it just depends on what he's doing. He looks like he'd be more DPS because he looks very squishy all around. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how, how I feel about this guy. I like his name, though, but um, no. he's, he's all right. Now that you say it, I just I, I see the diaper too. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it looks like a full oh, load man. there too. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. And our next legendary familiar is called Wind Crash. Um, if that was a man, baby, this is an absolute man. Uh, this guy definitely skips leg day, however. But dang, look at the look at that chest and shoulders. This dude can lift. Uh, absolute beast of a familiar here. Super buff, has the big arms. You know, I I, I can almost guarantee he's he's got to be a tank. He seems insanely awesome. He's probably, honestly, the best looking familiar in the bunch, in my honest opinion. I think his armor is evenly distributed. Pretty nice. I love that little wrap on his left hand to make it not look so empty there. And the horn, super clean. The whole design is nice. I love the little warts. The attention to detail is super freaking clean, but I don't know why my guy had to skip leg day. <laughs> he looks pretty cool, but I can't agree with you more on that, Andy. And we're going to go on to the mythic familiar, Synonix. Synonix seems pretty clean. I love the color of the armor. I really like how evenly distributed it is. It doesn't seem too 
too much. But if there is one thing I could say about it, I'm not sure how I feel about that little Spartan helmet in the middle. It's kind of taking away from the look of it, but it does seem pretty cool. They seem like they're going to be, I don't know, pretty strong. They seem very DPS oriented. Yeah, so Sononix, you can clearly see he's like almost based on like a cheetah or a leopard. I'm thinking cheetah just because he's got those thin legs. And I would have to guess high speed or high agility familiar here. You know, I can imagine this guy hitting me five times before I get a turn off. <laughs> you know, a mythic, I'm guessing he's going to be a very high agility familiar. Yeah, he's honestly pretty clean and I can't wait to see. I can't wait to make him, honestly. So that was all of the leaked familiars for the upcoming invasion. Um, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I hope I can get some of them pretty quickly here, but I know I know with my RNG it'll take a while. <laughs> However, there is more to the invasion than just new familiars. We've also got a couple of new cosmetic mounts. First one we're going to talk over is called Augurius. Now Augurius looks like you know a gladiator's chariot drawn by. Um, <laughs> How do I put this? Uh, like a slug beast, maybe? <laughs> um, I like the chariot. I like the slug beast. Uh, the horns are cool. Popping through that night helmet. Um, what do you think, world? I think it looks like a little cow dog with horns. <laughs> it looks so, so goofy, but, but I like him. I like him a lot. I'm probably going to rock him a little bit, but I'm not sure how long I'm going to rock him because we're going out of the next mount here. The next mount is called Radicus. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're <laughs> riding a rat with armor. <laughs> that's awesome. Who doesn't want to ride a giant rat? Like, that's cool. This is like the cleanest mount they've had probably since that nine tail fox they had, however many tails mm -hmm. it had. It's a pretty clean mount. And I guess, depending on what kind of stuff you like, what style, I think this is going to suit uh, most players because it's very dungeon-esque. Radicus is super like grim dungeon vibe. I, I really want to see his animations for when he's running. I think they could make it super clean. I agree. Um, I definitely want to like almost base a whole ar armory slot around like maybe like a, a sort of the sort of guy that would ride Radicus around. So I'm excited for him. Yeah, he'll go really good with a lot of cosmetic combinations. So that's hype. So those are the two upcoming familiars. And the last thing coming to Bit Heroes in the upcoming Rumble Invasion is a mythic main hand called Exodus. So you can see it here. It is a sword with like floating earth chunks. I think it's an awesome blade. I could definitely see this doing some type of earth damage with its skills. Yeah, it seems like there might be elements in this invasion just seeing that. So I'm not too sure. I'm really hoping there is. Hopefully, it's going to be something that's easy to do for all players. And hopefully, it's accessible for all players. I believe it should be, seeing as it is some kind of event for everybody. Um, but it does look pretty cool. And I really do like the aesthetics, honestly. like It, it seems like it's going to be a really good weapon. And personally, some of my favorite skills come from swords. So this is going to be a really nice weapon. I could feel it. Yeah, overall, I'm really looking forward to the Rumble Invasion. You know, it's really awesome to see the game, keeping it fresh, adding new content, you know, new familiars to to gather, to face, um, to theorycraft with. It's, it's really exciting. Hey, Andy, I think you mentioned something about Synonics having high agility stat. What, what exactly is agility? <laughs> well, world, I am so glad that you asked. Agility is used with power to calculate the player or familiar's combat speed. For every turn the player or familiar receives, the player or familiar will also generate 0.5 skill points. Thank you to the Bit Heroes Wiki for supplying this week's wiki highlight. And now we're going to move on to one of my favorite segments, Fashion Heroes. Honestly, I think a lot of us love Fashion Heroes. Last week, we had Ryan the Lion Lion versus Kecko. And honestly, it was a tie. For the first time ever, we actually had a tie in Fashion Heroes. Yeah, I will say I did love Ryan's flaming head and pet. And I did love Kiko's, you know, Grim, Grim Reaper look and bat. It uh, definitely seems like both of these heroes had what it takes to become last week's Fashion Hero. <laughs> so 
moving on to this week's Fashion Hero contestants, we have got Kaz. Now, Kaz is a player after my own heart. He's rocking the green Andy Cosmetics. Absolutely unmatched. If, if he doesn't win with the Andy Cosmetics, I don't know what is right in this world. What do you think, world? I don't know. I'm not much of a green fan, but uh, <laughs> it does look pretty cool, and he is rocking that Andy Cosmetics, so he might have the upper hand here. Who is he going against? So Kaz will be facing off against Delery this week. Now, I will say, hands down, Delery is looking amazing. You can see that shocking electric. You can see the steam blowing off. A lot of movement, a lot of uh, gold, you know, really sick. What are your thoughts, world? I really, really like all the gold in there. I like all the subtle blues. I like everything going on there. Very, very clean, very different look from Kaz. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the audience votes for. I can't really pick between the two because I kind of like them both. Well, the good news world is that it's not up to us. It is up to our audience who wins this week's Fashion Heroes. If you'd like to vote, please leave your vote down in the comments below. And if you want to be featured in a future episode, make sure to leave your in-game name and say, I want to be in the next Fashion Heroes in the comments. All right. And next off, we're going to go to our viewer questions. So the first question is going to be coming from CPU Ryan. Are schematics affected by item find? So does it make it easier to find with enough item find? Yes. All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I, will, I will elaborate a little bit. So, so yes, CP Ryan, item find does impact schematics. I will throw in there as a little bit of bonus information. And the reason you might be asking this is because world boss materials such as neural net roms, core aligners, hobbit's feet, that kind of thing are not impacted by item find. So totally valid question, but schematics are indeed impacted by item find. So feel free to pop a bit gore on a Sunday and go for those schematics. All right. And our next question comes to us from Ors, who asks, what are the best familiars to use and max out from tier 10 to tier 13? Well, honestly, if you want the most bang for your buck and you're in tier 12 or higher, I think the best familiar, not only in that area, but in the game period, is Tethius. If you're really going to try to go for an all-out familiar that you really think you need that's going to help you out on your team, Tethius has is probably the best option for you. Yeah, so what really helped me break through tier 10, and honestly, I'm still using them past tier, tier 13, is Galarzdos. I'm a big Glarsdos stan. <laughs> You'll find me using uh, teams of full Glarsdos all day. Um, and I don't have Tethius yet, but that's on my to grind list. I'm actually going for them right now. But I would say Glarsdos comes available at tier 10. Great, familiar. Especially if you're a DPS, you can just do a Glarsdos sandwich, and that familiar is super helpful. If you're not a DPS, and this is another one on my to farm list, but since I'm a DPS, a little lower on my priorities is Penguita. Penguita comes available at tier 13 when you can start doing the la the Ignited Abyss world boss, and Penguita is a phenomenal combustion damage dealer. If I had to throw one more familiar in there, I would also say that Ignatus Raw, if you are down for a very long farm, <laughs> is probably the best bait in the game, in my honest opinion. I believe everything that they have in their kit, from their bonus all the way to their kit, is extremely solid, and if you were to pick one of the other, whether it's Tethius or Ignatus Raw, you really can't go wrong with either or. So, yeah, those are going to be my two, and his two, honestly, are extremely solid as well. I recommend any of those familiars that we just brought up. Well, that's going to be pretty much all for today's episode of Bit Heroes Radio. We really hope that you enjoyed listening to our discussion about Bit Heroes. And as always, we want to give a big shout out to our community of fans who make this podcast possible. Andy and I had a great time. If you have any feedback or suggestions or viewer questions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on our Bit Heroes Radio Discord, which you can find a link to in the description below. Before we sign off, we do want to remind you to subscribe to both of our YouTube channels so that you never miss an episode. Please visit both World Eater's channel at World Eater and my channel at Bitverse Andy which you can find links to also in the description below.
And if you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a like and comment as it helps other bit heroes discover our podcast. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next time on Bit Heroes Radio.